go. I mean, go through it. I, well, I have. I, we make it up as we go along, to be honest. <laughs> de de well, it depends. It depends on so many factors. You know, how how high you. If it's very light, as opposed to the kite's pulling and you're almost about to wire run type of conditions. There's there's there, there's a, a lot of different. But the first thing we do before we drive is we pull more board down. So we, we, we pull more board down. That's that's stabilise the boat, but also so you can roll the boat out with some power. If you've got no board down, the boat's not gonna you're not gonna get any rolling effect from 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 it. And more meaning, how much did you have before? So well, so depending if you if you if you if you're dead down and there's good pressure and that you're fairly flat water, you can go all the way up. Yeah, we put the we we'll put the board in the trunk completely away. Yeah, we, that's just a mode we'll talk about. And then we'll talk about it when we've done it. Does the boat feel squirrely? Does it feel okay? And sometimes that works. Typically the board's at about 30 degrees. That's kind of the default position. Away. <laughs> uh, but we'll, I'll go to 45 or, or even a bit more for the, for the jive. So on that, if there's, if there's enough pressure in it, what we actually do, or what I like is while we're sitting in place, We'll, we'll go gang, can now, three, two, one, and I'll uncleat the pole. I'll uncleat the pole. The skipper does. As a skipper. And, and, and that's so the crew's got the, 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 the sheets ready. I, I also grabbed the new to be sheet. The sheet's going to be. Handed you the board no, no I, well, it's, on my boat, I have them here, so like there and there. So all I do is uncleat it. And I've got the new sheet. The reason we do that is the pole with the, the, the setup, the pole just whizzes away, right? And the kite just stays exactly where it was. Nothing's happened so far, except it's not got a pole there. And then we'll roll the boat. So then all of our focus is just about rolling the boat through the jibe and flipping the mainsail over, which in that situation the crew does, which I, it's the only time I let the crew move the boom in the boat. Well, were you sitting to lure though? I'm sitting to lure, yeah, they're sitting to windward. So we roll the boat. I've got the new sheet in my hand as I hit the new side and roll the boat back. They just pull the pole out and I give them the sheet back and the kite hopefully has stayed exactly where it was filling. Um, but as he comes in, I'm trying to make sure I can stay as high as possible so the boat keeps going fast because as soon as I turn down, it stop. So um, that seems, that's the other reason I'm thinking it seems counter, it seems odd to me that as soon as you release the pole, the kite isn't rotating the forward, but I guess- turning. The boat's turning. Boat's, yeah. That's so, so your crew just has to be on it. As I release, like, as I release the pole, I'm already turning. So your crew so is just boat's like, turning. So as soon as your, your crew sees you grab that pole and you stand up in the boat, he's already like on his way. He knows. Yeah. Yeah. Are you are you able to pull the main across because you're going down that face of the yep. wave and that's, no that's what it. keeps it? The load no load on the main at all. It's just a flick. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You're going down a wave. You just. It just happens. It's Without the wave, like if you mistime the wave, then it would load up again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, occasionally, <coughs> where that happens, we, we bail out, and our bail out yeah. is back on the wire, set it all up again. We never try and jive with the crew in the boat. Yeah. Hmm. Always go back, back to full speed. Say that again. You never try to jive if the boat slowed down, or absolutely okay. not. Yeah, that's an absolute abort. We actually, the first time in two or three years, we capsized at the North Americans this year. And we, for exactly that reason, we came in, it was at the, the giant mark, and Paul, Paul so you, you may have all seen the pictures, but the, the mark was really high, so we were ragging the spinnaker to make the mark. I'd let the van go, so there's, everything's fucked up, and there was a photo boat right in the way. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody photographers. Cat size once in three years, and there's a photo boat right there. Uh, it was blowing 12 knots. <laughs> <laughs> And, and we, 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 we bore away with us both in the boat and spinnaker flapping and everything loaded and we jived. We actually made the jive okay and Carl's pulling the pole out on the new side but the bang wasn't on. So the boat could bore back away again. Bang, oh. straight in. So. Hmm. How much bang do you sail with that one? Pretty slack. Pretty slack. Um, everybody has... Okay, I should correct that. So there's, we have two modes wire running downwind. The, the, the sort of the, the, the gay, where the crew's high and the, the helm's hobbling. The what? The gay. 
Gay Euro mode, yeah. <laughs> gay Euro mode. All the yeah, skinny Germans. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. We, we shorten the name. So the, what all the, all the skinny Germans do is, you know, high on the wire, helm groveling in the bottom of the boat. Jack's really good at that, actually. <laughs> and, uh, that, Jack? <laughs> and, and put in the bow, put in the bow down. And for that, you need quite a bit of bang. That likes the bang to be quite firm. But as soon as we then switch to go in what we call, you know, full tilt, crew low on the on the wire, back of the boat, me hiking, then I've got the bank really well eased. And <coughs> I'm carrying the main, the main's probably trimmed to about where you see it there. You know, it's trimmed well into the boat, but with loads of twist. So, and then just lighting the boat up. And, and the goal then is just to sell the boat for the horizon as fast as it will go. Just make the boat go as fast as it will go. And then you'll find you'll naturally soak down to, to the, to the lowest line and you'll, you'll actually be going a knot, two knots faster at the same line that everybody else who's trying to soak lowies. Hmm. What's, uh, are you, are you trying to go into that mode, uh, as soon as, as soon as you're on the wire? Like what's the, what's the wind range or conditions when you start, when you're able to do that? It's a wave state thing and also a tactical consideration too, but I think probably about 15, 16 knots generally okay. is when you switch to that. So assuming we're, we're wire running at about 11 or 12 knots probably. Then you're, you're, if, so the, so what's that, what, that, that if, 11 if to 12 to 15? If you're happening? going upwind and you drop the rig probably to about four, then I think you can light it up downwind. If you drop the rig to two, you can certainly light it up downwind. But if you're in that sort of six, seven, eight range with the rig upwind, you probably have to be going, going deep, yeah. wire, wiring deep up downwind. I'm, I'm trying to get at that zone where you, you are, uh, so you're saying if if you are on the wire downwind, you're you're sailing the hot as fast, hot and fast as you can go. No. Or is there a no, no. moderate range? That, 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 that's the the, the the bit in between. So you've got the, the gay euro. Twelve to fifteen wiring. knots. Yeah, from when you start wiring, which is probably about ten knots now. You're probably wiring downwind, ten knots of breeze. Okay. Up until you're. Can comment. He's quite hey. quiet too. Yeah. No, I don't know about that. So, <laughs> about 15 knots, so the 10 to 14, probably by 15 knots, we're probably lighting You're it up. sending it. Yeah. But it is also wave wave state specific. Hey. So, if you've got waves that you, know, you, you can take down, but are a problem to get over, then you want to stay low. So, if you can't quite get the boat to keep planing over the waves, then the high mode doesn't seem to work so well. It likes to still be pushed down. What's your idea? So, Send it so mode. What we do, we're, we're uh, fully at the back of the bus, as far back as you can get in the Ron bar, which you've got kind of uh, the toe strap point there. So I'm sitting basically at the back of the black tape there and hiking hard. So your feet tend to be going forward and the tillers across your body. Uh, water rats are slightly different because you've got longer toe straps, and the problem I used to find with water rats is the tiller will be hitting my feet when I'm hiking. You have to end up putting that's, your feet down. That's what's happening. You're getting that? Yeah. Yeah. So you got to try and fix that somehow because that's well, a liability. I, I have really loose hiking straps just because I, I like to hike hard. I'm used to hiking hard. And so I think that's part of why my feet are just really high in the boat. Right. So it's quite, it's also set in at an angle there. Mine goes forward. So that probably changes the angle a bit. And then what we try and do is I actually heal the boat up, rock the boat up. Hard to tell how much, but a significant way past flat. So there's probably 10, 15 degree of heel. And that seems to get the boat on a narrower piece of the boat once it's planing hard. And it, it definitely goes substantially faster like that. Every time you go flat, the boat's slower. So when you're in sender mode, you're not flat? Not flat. Rolling no. to weather? No, not away enough. from you. So, but it's, it's, it's significant and it doesn't seem to hurt if you go more. If you have bursts where the boats really heal quite a long way, it still seems to rock along just fine. Hmm. So, so I don't fight it too much, I just let it roll. Let it just keep going. So what's your goal with Carl at that point um, while he's out there? Who who's sinks <coughs> in if the if it goes light? You don't. You're not. You just, that's, that's what I'm pushing to all the time. So if it goes light, then you obviously need to think about changing, changing what you're doing. Assuming you're you're in that mode, then it's just helpful to have a So that means that, and so talk about your point at that point, you know, when you're 
or you're headed up high enough that Carl's straight legged and you are hiking the whole time. Yeah. You're not he's, trying he's, to soak it. He's string down. Basically, the rule is if I'm hiking, he's string all the way down. So that, that's a good just... Straight leg. Oh, he yeah. has to bend his knees. He, he... Not bending his knees. He has to bend his knees to help him have to head up. Yeah. yeah. It's not an option. That's, that's, that's the main lesson I learned last year. I look back and knees are bent, and that's that. That was that modern range. That's why I was asking yeah. specifically about that 12 to 15 knot range. Uh, and and it, it's also, you know, you, you've got to watch what each other's doing, because if the if the if the crew's not high, if the helm's not hiking, then the crew shouldn't be either. You should be okay. This isn't a go fast mode. What are we trying to do here? We're trying to trying to soak so the crew should be up on the string and and you know step in the bow forward when they can. And that. Once we're in. The, uh, if I start hiking, Carl or Rob need to know that that's what we're doing and they, they need to be straight down. Because there's nothing worse as a helm. We hike it hard and look at them at 45 degrees. Mm -hmm. We're fighting each other here, you know, mm -hmm. so you need to make sure you're, you're, you're in sync there and pulling in the same direction. You talked about that uh, crew front yeah. foot. Um, is there any forward and aft weight the crew can do when you're going through waves? I mean, are you trying to, are you trying to manipulate that bow like you would on a laser or something? So w once we're sending it, no, mm -hmm. I, I don't like them to, to, to step forward. But you've got the speed to be going over the yeah, waves. What if, what if you're just trying to maintain connection? You haven't quite got that speed. If the crew's good at it, I'm okay with it. But if the crew gets it wrong, I, mm -hmm. I don't like it. So I'm really not a huge fan of it. Unless they're, if they're very dynamic and they're, they're doing it well, mm -hmm. uh, and, and the waves are right to do it, it's good. But I think crews do it too early too often. And the boat just gathers around, and I, I, I don't particularly like that. Okay. I like it to be try to keep it smooth. So, it's crew questions. You should type up. No. Um, and so, it, at that point, do you feel that what what happens to the bow when you start raising your point higher, keeping the crew out? I mean, when the puffs come on, most people are like, "Oh, I got to be," you know. Quick, you don't really have to steer much. No, you, you ignore where the boat's going. I completely ignore where the boat's going. I'm just trying to make the boat go as fast as it possibly can to, to draw the apparent forward, and then we'll carve down on that that speed. As we build up that speed, the boat will come down. And if you if you look at any of the videos of the boats racing, you can see these big curves of the boats that are doing that. Doing that, you start off, you build up speed, and then you just sail. And you you you'll, you'll see yourself sail around the boats below you. You just you start off here, you'll start off and then you just accelerate and you just go over the top of the route and you'll end up back on their bow. Just go in faster. So it's, it's, it's and that's that's fun too. Yeah. That's in the mid to high teens. Yeah, from, from probably 15, 16 knots on. 